Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Another public sector union and the GNT complete negotiations. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court launches the second phase of its e-litigation portal for St. Lucia. Caribcation kicks off with St. Lucia's football greats. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Another public sector bargaining agent has completed industrial negotiations with the government negotiating team. The St. Lucia Nurses Association and the government negotiating team signed the collective bargaining agreement, which covers the period April 1, 2016 to March 31, 2022. Chairman of the government negotiating team, Vern Gill, said the agreement reflects outcomes that are beneficial to both parties, including increases in salaries and benefits. The aspect of the salaries that we have agreed upon reflect the following. A lump sum payment of $1,500, which is aimed at addressing the period 16 to 19, a 1% for the period 18 to 19, 1% for the period 2019 to 2020, 1% for the period 2020 to 2021, and 2% for the period 2021 to 2022. So it encompasses the whole six year period, and it means then that we don't have to be under pressure in terms of negotiations for the next few years. President of the St. Lucia Nurses Association, Alicia Baptiste, signed on behalf of the association. I want to first thank the government negotiating team for the cordial way in which the negotiations was conducted and the mandate was given by my members to sign on behalf of them and today I'm very happy that we can come together and conclude this long process and I know at the end my members are the ones who will benefit from what we have gotten on their behalf. Senior Labour Officer Kissinger Smith was pleased with the cordial relations between the two parties. Negotiating collective agreements can be one of the most difficult things. You have individuals wanting different things, you know, but mainly we see when people come to negotiate collective agreements, we speak to salary increases because of I mean, the economy and tough financial you know, the tough financial um, situation of the economy, inflation. So people always look forward to seeing some sort of, of, of increase in a salary as a, some type of, 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 of benefit per se. So we're always happy that parties can come together and um, negotiations and collective agreements can be signed where people are, 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 are happy. Both parties, the bargaining unit and also the employer can be happy in the end of the signing of this agreement. You know? The agreement was signed on June 4, 2019. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court has rolled out the second phase of its e-litigation portal for St. Lucia, which includes all new civil matters to be heard in the High Court. More from Janelle Norvell. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court's ECSC's e-litigation portal serves as a platform to improve the delivery of justice to citizens of the region. The ECSC is introducing the next phase of the e-litigation portal for St. Lucia. This new portal will include all new civil matters to be heard in the High Court. ECSC's Chief Registrar Michelle John Fables explained that the portal contributes towards increasing the transparency of court services, allowing the ECSC to improve access of its service to stakeholders and speeding up otherwise slow processes. She added that statistics on the portal's usage in St. Lucia is very encouraging, hence prompting the launch of Phase 2 in St. Lucia. From the 1st of July 2019, all new matters filed in the Civil Division of the High Court in St. Lucia must be done via the portal. In order to file a new matter or a document in a new matter, a law firm must be registered. User accounts for the legal practitioners and legal secretaries in the firm must be created. And a law firm account must have significant funds to pay the necessary filing fees. What does this mean for the unrepresented litigants? The facility 
arranged at the High Court, which we refer to as the Service Bureau, is in effect to assist unrepresented litigants with the uploading of documents for filing on the portal. So today we want to ensure that the public is the public is fully aware of the portal, how it operates, how it is to be used, their rights in relation to the portals, the rules that govern the portal. According to the Chief Registrar, the launch of the portal over the seven-month period has seen a total of 203 matters filed, 78 in St. Lucia, 264 legal practitioners have registered, 103 law firms have registered, 43 in St. Lucia, 183 commercial matters have been filed, of that 58 in St. Lucia, 17 High Court civil appeals have been filed, 16 in St. Lucia, three High Court commercial appeals all in St. Lucia, and one magisterial civil appeal filed in St. Lucia. A number of training sessions are being conducted for stakeholders and other personnel. ECSC's Information Technology Manager, Mark Ernest, described the feedback received since the launch of the portal. During our training sessions, you're getting that type of feeling that it's difficult and um, why are we undertaking that change? But after a few hours of training and exposure to use of the system, it's a complete turnaround. Um, and that we've experienced in BVI and Guila as well. Um, a little slower in St. Lucia, but of course, um, we're getting we get in, in St. Lucia. ECSC's court administrator, Gregory Girard, highlighted launches to take place in other member states. Three other member states this year, um, Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Dominica. Between October and December, those three member states will be done. And probably in the first three to four months of 2020, we will do St. Vincent, Grenada, and Montserrat. Um, that will be the civil matters and court of appeal. And at some stage, we will launch in the criminal jurisdiction as well. The portal went live in St. Lucia on the 26th of November 2018 for all new commercial and court of appeal matters filed on or after this date. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney continues to lead the charge for the Caribbean when it comes to sustainable development and the impact of climate change. The Prime Minister is participating in a high-level panel discussion under the theme Vulnerability to Resilience, You Choose, at the Caribbean Development Bank's 49th Annual Meeting of the Board of Governors. The June 5th and June 6th meeting is being held at the Hyde Regency in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, with the panel discussion being led by Honorable Camille robinson Regis, Trinidad's Minister of Planning and Development. The purpose of the event is to highlight the current and planned initiatives in regional economies to reduce their vulnerability and strengthen resilience to exogenous shocks, natural hazards and climate change. They will also identify opportunities or initiatives for improved regional cooperation to foster strengthened resilience. In the Prime Minister's absence, Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Honorable Leonard Montoot, serves as Acting Prime Minister. The work undertaken to respond and address the long-term effects of the Zika outbreak in St. Lucia was highlighted as the United States Agency for International Development, USAID's flagship maternal and child survival program, hosted a dissemination event recently. More from Fennel Neptune. The National Dissemination Event provided Department of Health officials and other local partners with the opportunity to present the work achieved over the past year as it relates to caring for women, newborns, children and families affected by the Zika virus. United States Ambassador to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean and the OECS, Linda Tagliolotello, celebrated the partnership of the Department of Health and expressed the need to continue the work to minimize the effects of Zika among future generations. I would like to underscore that while this work focused specifically on Zika, the investments made are far-reaching and will help to prevent, respond, and control all mosquito-borne illnesses. Today, due to continued work to curb the spread of mosquito-borne illnesses in several communities, reported Zika cases have decreased in St. Lucia. The sudden decrease in cases compared to the same period of April 2016 
seemingly suggests that things are getting so much better here in St. Lucia. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Health and Wellness, Felix St. Hill, believes the support from the program is very important as it will assist with addressing the gaps in St. Lucia's health system. This multi-partner flagship program in support of the U.S. Agency for International Development Priority Goal of Ending Preventable Child and Maternal Deaths fits quite nicely with our own initiative here in St. Lucia to develop and further our access to health care for children and women. The need to support countries to increase coverage and utilization of evidence-based, high-quality reproductive, maternal, newborn, and child health interventions at the household, community, and health facility levels cannot be overemphasized. St. Hill also called on the partners to remain committed to improving the approach towards healthcare, particularly the goal of ending preventable child and maternal deaths. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. Welcome, everyone. Ryan O'Brien with you once again with an update on happenings from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. Youth in the communities being targeted by the Youth Empowerment Project have been showing keen interest in the implementation of the various programs to be undertaken under the project. Coordinator Joanne Husbands says the programs are being well accepted by community members who are anxious to be part of what is being proposed. Yes, a lot of um, um, youth um, have been supporting the, the project. They have been waiting for um, projects of that kind and waiting for not only the, the, the social assistance and the, the opportunities that may, it may provide to them and to, to keep them engaged, but um, they want to support it because they need and see the need for um, bringing in this project to help tackle crime, to tackle um, the behavior, and um, to constructively um, put a better image and um, towards the communities, towards um, empowerment of them, and to just champion skill, their mindsets, skill sets development, and um, overall national development and public safety. Ms. Husbands also highlighted some of the programs to be carried out under the project five major components, well four I should say, um, to the project. Um, the Integrated Court Diversion Program, the Integrated Community-Based Transformation Programs, the, uh, the Community Policing Initiative, and the design of the uh, the redesign of the George V Park, which is otherwise known as the Gardens. Now, the Integrated Court Diversion Program consists of the Youth Recidivism Reduction Program and the Out of School Suspension Program. And um, we are really Right now, we are seeking through the various components of all of um, the project, or the overall project rather, we are seeking specialists um, through um, requests for expression of interest. We s released it um, this week uh, to, the, to the overall um, public, nationally, regionally, and internationally to submit the expressions of interest so that they could be a part of um, building um, being a part of building the components and to, to offer overall change and um, to help to support the communities. The Youth Empowerment Project is placing particular emphasis on the communities of New Village, Conway, Barnard Hill and Wilton's Yard. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be assisting as a record-breaking number of runners from 11 different countries are coming back to St. Lucia for the third time 
to take part in the Cruise Marathon Challenge. Ministry of Tourism will once again host a race with involvement from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. The first two editions of the Southern Caribbean Challenge were held in 2016 and 2017, while last year's event was cancelled due to hurricane damage in the area. During the seven-day challenge, 22 runners hailing from the USA, Germany, Czech Republic, Canada, the UK, Poland, Australia, Pakistan, Italy, Taiwan and the Philippines will take part in seven marathons on six Caribbean islands and one aboard the cruise ship. This year, the group will again include runners from around the world with exceptional running resumes. Between them, they have broken 15 world records and some have run a marathon in over 100 countries. Combined, these runners have completed over 2,000 marathons around the world. The Southern Caribbean Challenge started with a marathon in Puerto Rico on June 2nd. Thursday's run in St. Lucia will be the fifth race of the series. And with that, we come to the end of our segment from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority, under its Caribcation brand, which is primarily focused on welcoming regional travelers to the destination, has collaborated with Veterans in Sports Inc. for staging of the St. Lucia International Masters Football Invitational, slated for June 7 to 10, 2019, under the theme Be Inspired. Over this Whitsuntide weekend, the international tournament will welcome over 400 veterans from 28 teams across the USA, Canada, Dominica, Trinidad, Grenada, Barbados, and St. Vincent. Christopher Gustave is the marketing manager for Caribbean and events at the SLTA. The most obvious thing is that these visitors need to eat. They need places to stay. They need transportation to move around and probably even a good souvenir. That means more money to hotels, restaurants, sporting facilities, taxis, groceries, and even gift shops alike. We also have to remember that because of media and the broadcast rights that have had on TV, people get to see St. Lucia on TV. For example, millions of viewers get to experience a little taste of our beautiful island and hopefully put St. Lucia on the bucket list. Veterans football ambassador Brian Charles Lara says there is much St. Lucia can gain by the hosting of the event. Over the next uh, couple of weeks, hundreds of people are going to be coming to play football, to watch football. They're going to be walk walking through your streets, they're going to want something from St. Lucia to take back. They're going to want to taste your food, they're going to want to meet your people. And let me tell you something, it's not the runs that grow, uh, 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 is it Brazil? Brazil? It's not the runs that bring me back here, I think it's your people. Um, how affable they are, how engaging they are. And this is something that... You know, we have around the Caribbean, we have amazing people that can hold on and engage uh, foreigners and they keep coming back. So I want to encourage that you to keep doing that as well. Local greats like Titus, Titi Elva, Elijah Joseph, Alvin Xavier, Valentius Joseph, Leighton Ratton Sanderford and Trevor Cadet are all geared to put on a show. Matches will kick off concurrently on June 8, 9 and 10 at 10 a.m with various teams competing on the hour until 5 p.m. at the Saab Sporting Facility, the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground, and at the Grosley Playing Field. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Novella Quayol. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So, the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. 
mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur, Madame, du Patrimoine qui ne reste qu'au sable de pour information au gouvernement cette fois-ci. GIS, au sein de la télévision nationale PIA NTN, quand vous êtes au Nouvel Acquéol, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Le gouvernement a continué à effort pour moderniser le registre de PIA. Ça a fait de façon à côté de ces formations qu'on a trouvées à présent à son computer, qu'on a servi de technologie nouveau pour préserver ces formations. Selon le ministre qui est placé au ministère de l'Agriculture, la pêche, plan des affaires physiques, ressources naturelles et coopératives, on est Harold Stanislas. Action ça là qui fait possible pour enregistrer à opérer plus effectivement et aussi qui a une cause plus apparence et pour ça by compte des administrations des affaires tech qui a cette ci On est Stanislas à celui qui les projets ça là fini ça qui a placé cette ci à des oppositions pour payer à trouver information concernant tech plus facilement et l'occasion est enregistrer pour présenter un service plus vite et que vous pouvez soutenir qui est prêt pour organiser des formations qui vous méritent. Alors, moi, c'est un cas gaspillé pour trouver un corrigement pour la situation qui a pris un pied bon pour l'action en département de salaire. Le ministère de l'Islande a annoncé aussi qu'il a entré en bout de l'exercice qui a commencé à peu près 10 ans qui passé côté de l'Islande pour trouver des services et qui a échangé entre ces diverses compagnies de registration, de coopération, des affaires assurance nationale. Registrer le conseil en parmi d'autres institutions. On a observé ce que le gouvernement a pris des marches pour adresser tout le sujet qui a existé au département registré en pays de cette ci La semaine qui passe, c'est le site de l'atelier de Caraïbes pour la première fois qui a été pour faire et puis agrandissement des affaires et faciliter l'environnement mondial. Faciliter ça, c'est un qui est très favorable à la façon de développement pour l'autre pays et que j'ai fait avec la plus que 18 points. Il y a un million de dollars en support finance et aussi en l'autre 94,2 millions de dollars pour un commerce 4500 projets en 170 pays. Faciliter le développement mondial, ça là, car il y a une chaîne qui pour aider la chaîne d'attention à ce affaire national, organisation des affaires société civile et l'autre organisation au sein au courant et puis avec d'autres façons de coordination. À présent, pour cette fois déjà, Kai Avelab, 4.1 millions de dollars américains pour activité de conservation au niveau de la terre. Côté 52 millions Kai en place pour manger l'un des salaires et 206 millions pour ces pays Kai Avelab pour l'autre 4 l'année pour venir. C'est le CEO de ces pays qui est plus stabilisé à ces officiers gouvernement qui a engagé des projets salaires qui ont déjà servi l'argent pour faciliter très bien. Si l'on coordonne des relations pour ces divers pays, il y a un programme des assistances finances qui a fait une grande différence à la vie de plusieurs individus à toutes les régions. Si l'on projet ça, il est possible pour l'année de plusieurs projets en société qui ont apporté de bons bénéfices à l'environnement, plusieurs groupes et organisations en diverses communes, j'ai espéré ces bénéfices. Association nos PIA, si l'agrément de paiement que le gouvernement a mis en place pour les services civils, ça a fait et puis gagner là qui a représenté le gouvernement, là il vient pour les négociations et puis ces diverses agences. Il y a aussi l'agrément qui a couvert la période du 1er avril 2006 ou 31 mars 2010. Chef de la négociation du gouvernement, Van Gildi, qui a représenté le gouvernement a bénéfice pour tous les deux partisans. Côté, il y a trouvé un haussement de salaire et paiement de ces bénéfices qui étaient en place pour les recevoir. L'argument qui a couvert la lombe de 1 500 dollars qui a embrassé l'année 2016 ou 2019, 1 pour 100 pour 2018, 18 pour 2019, 1 pour 100 pour 2019 pour 2020, et 2020 pour 2021, et 2 pour 100 pour 2021 pour 2022. Président de l'association NOS, Lisha Baptiste, si à ce compte l'association NOS, c'est ici. Je te suis arrivé à la le 4 juin l'année ici. Et c'est pour ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vais vous remercier autant pour garder, je vais vous une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas considérer que ça va être la vie quand je vais vous présenter l'autre nouvelle à Coyol. Après ça, je vais vous présenter Lisha. 
Messi or Pill Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy skies with a few light showers. A weak surface trough is expected to affect the northern Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Two tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 6.13 p.m. and will be low again at 10.31 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay was low at 12.50 p.m. and will be high again at 7.20 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 5.34 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.